hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i am going to show you how to analyze data with microsoft excel so we will be using two powerhouses that is power query and power pivot to perform this action power pivot is an excel add-in it can help you connect to multiple data sources it can also help to create models perform data analysis and share your insight easily and of course power query is used for transforming data it mostly used for etl process which is extracting data transforming data and loading data okay so we'll just get started right away we're going to use two files which is a sales data and a product data so i just have few rows of data here this is just an overview of what this data looks like i'm going to press ctrl n to open a new workbook so once i open a new workbook i'm going to click on data tab after clicking on data tab i'll come over to get data so i can select get data so you can see that there are different data sources that you can connect to so i want to connect to csv file so i'm just going to overrun from file and then scroll down to select from text slash csv then my data file opens up and i'm going to select cells and click import after importing the data the preview is being displayed here and going to if your data is clean you can load it directly to maybe your data model but for now i just want to click transform data let's see if there's any data issues that we need to fix before we load it to our data model and here it has opened up in my power query editor so in power query editor you can see this pane which is going to show your data preview of course you have different tabs that you can so many things that you can use to transform and prepare your data so if i look at the data type for each of these columns since it's just few columns i'm just going to scroll to check i can see that all the data types are correct this is an order date and this is a date data type and the other ones are equally correct so one other thing i can check for this particular data set is to I'm going to check my other status i should have three other status so i have three other status here and that is correct sometimes it's good to perform those checks so that any if you have any wrong spelling in any within any value in that column is going to show up as another value and it's not going to be unique so you have to make sure that you check all of those things so if I scroll down, I'll also try and check for the payment method. I should have two payment methods, which is credit card and PayPal. And that is actually correct too. So I'm going to just click OK. And this data set is OK. It's ready to be used. I can just click close and load. And I'm just going to select close and load too. Then in this dialog box, I'm going to click only create connection and then i'll select add this data to the data model and click ok after clicking ok you can see that the data has been loaded to our queries and connection data pane so it's showing that we've loaded that particular data so i'll just go ahead and import the second data set so if i can come over here and click on data tab so right here i'll just select from text slash csv and select my product data and click import so this is also a preview of the product data and just with this preview i can see some inconsistency within this data so i'm just going to select transform data and here my data has opened up in the power query editor so i'll first of all try to check for the data types here so sometimes if you want to be sure of the data type you can just click on transform tab you can click on transform tab and just click detect data type so it's just going to automatically detect the data type but most times if you have some inconsistencies within a particular column the data type that might be selected or might be detected may not be correct so you have to fix those errors or issues first so i'm just going to scroll to check that each of this column is correct and i can see that the data type for each of this column is actually correct but i can see that there are some issues within this data like for my product size column i should have three product size so if i click to show this drop down 
so you can see that instead of having three product size i now have six product size because they've been spelled with in both capital letters and small letters so we're going to fix this so i'm going to just click ok and once i click ok since i have already selected the product size column and my transform tab is open i'll come over to this text column tools and select format under format i want to choose uppercase for product size column you can decide to choose lowercase that means all the letters they will change to lowercase so if i click uppercase you can see that all the product size has changed to uppercase so if i click to show this drop down again you can i my product size has changed to three because it is originally supposed to be three so we've been able to fix that particular column then i'll click ok after clicking ok i can just scroll to check for other errors in this data set so for product category i can see that we already have different spellings for some words so let's check to be sure so if i click here we're supposed to have unique product categories but you can see that we have different mountain bikes different road bikes because they are all spelled differently and i'm going to just click ok and select the column go over to my format once i click format i'm going to choose capitalize each word so i'll just select this and once i select that you would see that all the words in this column each word will be capitalized so if i now click back on this drop down you can see that all those inconsistencies have been corrected so we have one unique mountain bike as a category and we also have one unique road bikes as a category so we've been able to also fix that and i'm going to click ok then if i scroll down here just by looking at these two values you can see that there are spaces before the value so we need to trim those trailing spaces if not if you leave some of these things like this your analysis may be incorrect so i'm going to select this product column and i'll click on this i'll still click on format and i'll use trim so if you've used trim function in excel you know that it helps to remove trailing white spaces in a particular cell that contains any value so you can see that those spaces have been removed so everything is being applied to the entire column then for my product description i can see that there is an empty space here so in cases of missing values most times if those missing values do not directly affect your analysis in any way you can decide to drop the entire row that contain that missing value or if it will affect it and you don't need missing values within your data set you can replace it with any other text if the column is a text column or if it's a numerical column you can replace them with either the mean or the median of that entire column so yeah i just want to replace it with a text so I'm going to I'm going to select the entire product description column and once I select the product description column I'm going to select replace values and in this dialog box since the value I'm looking for is empty space I'm not going to type anything in value to find so I'm just going to type in the box replace with so I'm going to type not provided because that's a product description so I'll just say not provided and if you can see that particular empty space has been filled with not provided so i'll just scroll to see and make sure that every other thing is correct and the beautiful thing about power query is that whatever transformation steps you are applying to any of your values any column the transformation step is going to display here so so if you load this type of data, like data that have this same structure, if it's a continuous data that you keep loading and maybe you keep finding insights from, if you load the same data structure again to this particular query, this all these transformation steps that you've applied here is going to automatically apply to the new data sets that you are loading into Power Query. That's one beautiful thing about Power Query and it makes the data preparation very easy. 
After fixing the missing values and inconsistencies within this data set, I'll just click back on my home tab. Once I click on home tab, I'll select close and load. Then I'm going to click close and load to. So in this dialog box, I am going to click only create connection. Then I will select add this data to the data model. Then I'll click OK. So after clicking OK, you can see that the two data sets that we've loaded is showing in these queries and connection pane over here. So if you overrun it, you can just see a little box that is displaying whatever is in that data set. The next thing I am going to do, I'm just going to click back on my data tab. And once I click on data tab, I'll scroll over to data tools. And here you can see this power pivot window. So I'm going to select that power pivot window. So like I said, it's an Excel add-in. So sometimes you need to activate it so you can use. So my power pivot window has opened up. And if you can see, I have two, the two tables I loaded is here in my power pivot. This is the sales table. And this is also the product table. So what I will do now is to come over to view and select diagram view. So this is what the diagram view looks like here. I'm just going to create relationships between this table so that we'll be able to filter them. So you know that these are two different tables. So the relationship we'll create will be with a related column. I just want to place the sales table here because I'm going to create a date table. So if you're familiar with Power BI, you know that Sometimes if you want to perform time intelligence calculation, you need to create that table. You can also create similar thing in power pivot. So how do we do it? I'll, if you want to create a date table, just click on design tab and you'll see date table. And if I click on this date table and click new, it is going to automatically create a date table for me based on the date column in this data set. So here you don't have to write any function. You don't have to write any formula to create your date table. And you can see I have different columns. I have month, day of week. It even has a date hierarchy as well. So let's create relationships between this table. So the first thing I'm going to do, the related column between product table and sales table is product ID. So I'm going to drag this product ID and link it up with product ID in sales table. Then I'll also do the same thing for the date table and the sales table. I'm going to link the date column here with the other dates column in the sales table. So you can see that we've created relationships between these. If I drag it, if I drag this table down, you see this relationship. As I'm hovering on this relationship line, you can see the two related columns between this table. So that is it. I, so I'll just click back on home tab and click back on my data view. So this is the calendar table that has been created for this our data set. So for now, I am done with creating the model. Then I'm going to select pivot table. So power pivot is basically created for pivot tables. I know what pivot tables are used for in Excel. It's used to aggregate and summarize data. So I'm just going to select pivot table. So for this pivot table, you can use a new worksheet or you can use an existing worksheet so i'm going to just select a new worksheet i don't want to use an existing worksheet so let me select a new worksheet so another thing with power pivot is that just like you create measures measures are aggregations or summarizations of your data okay it's just like you create measures in power bi you can create measures in power pivot models so what you can do is in order to create measure I'm going to create a measure for total sales. So I'm just going to right click on the sales column and select add measure. Once I select add measure in this dialog box where I have the measure name, I'm going to type total sales. So we're going to use DAX function and formulas to actually write our measures. I'm just going to type the sum function. Once I type the sum function, I'm going to type the order total, which is the 
total stable then i'll close it close the bracket and under this category you can choose how you want your data to display if you want it to display as a general category choose general but for me i want currency so under this currency you can see that there is a symbol to choose from you can choose any other symbol that you want to i'm just going to leave the dollar sign there and another thing about this dialog box is we have a button that says check dax formula so if you click this button this button is going to run checks through your formula to see if it has errors or not then once i'm done with that i'm just going to click ok and if i click ok my measure has been created in order to see that measure if i select a drop down of this sales table over here i'm going to scroll down so you can see that a measure has been created here so since i need to create two other measures for this data i'm just going to right click add another measure and i'll type the measure name the measure name is average other quantity then i'm going to use the average function i'll type the average function and type quantity then i'll close the bracket and just click ok so if i scroll down you can also see that i have an average other quantity measure that i have created then i can create for i can create a measure for the total number of products that we have so i'll right click and select add measure so i'll say total number of products I'm just going to type that total number of products then i'm going to use a distance count because i want to use a distance count function because that's going to give me unique number of products within this data set so i'll type this things as you're typing you'll see it listed here so you can just scroll once you scroll to it you press your tab key and it's going to select that particular And it's going to select that particular function so i'll say distance count we're going to count our product id because we want distinct or unique product id and i'm going to close the bracket and click ok so if i click on the product table and scroll you can see that i have total number of products here so i'm just going to close this let me create a pivot table for the total sales I'll select total sales and it's showing in value. So this is my total sales. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this and paste here. Then I'm also going to paste here because I have three measures. I'm pasting all of this because I don't want to create new pivot tables in new worksheets. Okay, so I'm just going to paste each of it there. So for the second pivot here, I want to add the average other quantity. So I'm going to remove the total cells and I'll select the average other quantity. So that is it for the other quantity. Then for the last one, I want to impute the total number of products. So I'm just going to remove the total cells and select total number of products. So this is our total number of products. So for the, I'm just going to create other tables that we will use in our little dashboard where we're going to visualize all of this data so I'm, I'm going to select this i'll copy again like i said and paste so i'll just need to paste it like maybe three or four more times so that we'll use it and answer the questions that we need to answer so for the first one here I am going to select the product category so i'll select product category and you can see this is our total sales by product category so you can change this row label and put the product and type the product category so i'm going to type product category so that is it then for the second one i can also click on other status because i want to see the total sales by other status i'm going to click on other status 
then for the third one i am just going to select payment method so if i select this table i'll scroll down to where the column payment method is and i'm going to select it payment method then for the last one i want to show the this data set is actually a two month data set for february and march of 2023 so it's quite a little um time so i'm going to create this pivot table for day of week sales so i'm going to select this calendar i don't want to select date hierarchy but you can select date hierarchy if you select date hierarchy this is what your data set will look like it will start from the highest hierarchy which is the year 2023 if you keep on clicking down it's going to show you the months and then as you're clicking it's just going to show you the date so that is what hierarchy does and for so i'll just select more fields because i want the day of week so i'm going to select day of week and it's displaying here in the column field so i'm just going to click and drag and show it in the row field so this is the weekly sales the sales that we had for monday sunday monday tuesday and the rest of the week so this is it for our pivot table for now so what I can do next is to create charts for these pivot tables. So this is the aspect that we are going to visualize our data. So we've analyzed this data. We've answered the questions that we need to answer. Remember, as you're starting any data analysis project, you should always have an objective. So an objective will guide you. It's going to give you some focus on what you are expected to do. Okay. So we are going to visualize each of this data. I want to do it here because we'll create our dashboard in another worksheet. So I'm going to select this first, the product category and select pivot table analyze. Then I'll select pivot charts and then select bar chart. I want to use a bar chart for this and I'll click OK. Once I click OK, I'm going to drag this down. Let me just readjust it a little bit. So once I drag this down, I'm going to, I want to remove all these field buttons here. So I'm going to click back on pivot chart analyze on select the field button. Then I'm going to click here. I want to remove the grid lines and I also want to remove the legend. So I want to add data labels to my bars. That means I'll have to remove this X axis here. So I'm going to select and remove primary horizontal axis. So I have removed my bars now. I'm also going to change the chart title. So I'm going to change the chart title to total sales by product category. So you can always change it to whatever thing you are visualizing at the moment. Let me increase the size of this bar i'm just going to select the size of the bar i don't want to drill down so after selecting the size of the bar you can see our format data series here and once you if you click this icon you see this gap width so i'm going to use this slider and just keep i'll reduce the slider to increase the size of the bar or you can just type the percentage here at once so that is it for this and quickly I I want to change the colors of my chart. So what I can do is to click on page layout and under themes, I'm going to select colors. So there are different colors here as you are hovering on any of them. You can see that the colors in your pivot tables and pivot charts is changing. So you can choose any one. But if you need to add any other color, just click on customize color. This dialog box will show and you can choose any color that you want for your chat and your text you can just customize anything that you need to then but i don't want that i want to select one of the color themes here so i'm going to scroll and i think this one is okay this one is perfect so i'm just going to leave it at that so i'm going to create pivot chart for the other status i'm going to select it and click pivot table analyze then I'll select pivot chart and I want to use the clustered column for it. So I'm going to select clustered column and once I select it, let me just readjust it. When I take it over to the next sheet for our dashboard, we're going to increase it a bit. So I'm going to remove the field buttons. Click on pivot chart analyze. On select the field buttons, 
then i'll come to chart elements right here and i'll select this i'm going to remove the grid lines i remove the legend because i don't want that i can just double click here to edit my chart title so i'm going to type sales by other status So that is it for that particular chart. Then this other one is our payments method. So I can just scroll to give some space. I'm going to select it. I'm going to select the particular table I want, which is payment method. Remember, if you are showing only the pivot tables, always change your row labels like I, I did for the first product category. So I'm going to select the next table and once I select it, I'll click pivot table analyze and select pivot chart. So I want to use a donut chart. I'll click on pie. You can see there are different pie charts here. I'm going to select donut chart and select OK. So once I select OK, I'm just going to readjust this a bit. I'm just going to let me just keep readjusting. When I take it to our dashboard, I'll increase it. So after readjusting these, I'll click back on pivot charts, analyze and unselect the field button. So those field buttons have gone out. There's what we call quick layout. So it's going to show you a quick layout of how your charts should be displayed. So if I click on this design tab here and come over to chart layout, this is quick layout. So I'll select it. And as you're hovering, you can see that the layout of your chart is changing. So you're going to choose the one that you want or like. So I can choose any one. Let's say I choose this quick layout here. But even after choosing a quick layout for your chart, if there are other elements that you feel or you need to include within your chart, you can always go ahead and include it. Here, I'm going to click on the chart element and I want the legend to be by the bottom. I'm going to click on the drop down, then I'll click bottom so this is how i want the elements to show then i'm going to just edit this title so i'll type sales by payment method so that is it for our chart if i also want to reduce the size of this slices a little so i'm going to select it and i'm going to select the series option so for the old size, you can reduce it or you can increase it. So as I'm increasing it here, I can see that the size has reduced just a little bit. So that is it for my donut chart. So this is just showing you a lot of possibilities that you can do. A lot of charts that you can create to answer those questions that you have analyzed. So the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to create a line chart for this particular table, this table that has Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and their total sales. So I'm going to select that table. Once I select that table, I click on pivot table and align, select pivot chart, and then I'm going to select a line chart. So once I select you, so you can see that there are different line charts here. Let me just select the line chart that has markers already. So you can include markers in your line charts later, or you can just select it at once here. So I'm going to select that and click OK. So after selecting it and clicking OK, so this is showing the total sales for the week. But since we have two months in this data set, I'm just going to click back on the pivot table itself. Once I click back on the pivot table, let me close the format shape pane. So once I close the format shape pane, you can see my pivot table fields all over again. I'm going to select, I'm going to select this calendar. I want to add the month. Let me add months to this particular table. So if I add months to this table, the weekdays are pleated into their different months. And if I scroll down here, you can see that the different months are reflecting in the chart. So we have two lines, one for February and one for March. And just with this visualization, you can already see that March is doing very well, way better than February. So I want to remove the field buttons here. I'm going to click back on pivot chart analyze on select the field button and 
I can remove the grid lines if I want to. So sometimes you can decide to add data labels if you want to add data labels, but I don't want to add data labels to these data sets now. So I just want to leave it at that, but I want to bring the legend to the bottom. I'm going to select that and Okay, one more thing. I need to add the chart title. So this chart title, I can type February to March. I'll type February to March 2023 sales. So these are all our charts that we have created here. And the next thing we can do is to visualize this in a dashboard that we will share to the stakeholders or other team members that are in need of this analysis or are interested in this analysis. So I am just going to open a new sheet by clicking that plus icon. So the first thing I'll do is to click on view tab and on select the grid lines. So once the grid lines are off, I can click on insert tab, select shape and select this shape. So once I select that shape, I'm just going to, I'm going to drag this, it's just going to be a small dashboard, not so, not so big. So I'm going to select this, this is going to hold our title. So I'll click on shape format and remove the outline of this shape. So I'm just going to remove the outline of that shape. I've removed the outline of the shape. You can insert another shape or you can copy the shape and change it. So I'm just going to copy and paste the shape. That is me duplicating the shape. I'll drag it just a bit. After dragging the shape to this point, I'll click on shape format and I'm going to fill the shape with a white color. And since our background is white, I don't want to add a background color. I'm, I'm going to use a shape effect. So I'm going to select shape effect and I want to add a shadow to it. So I'm going to select this shadow. Once I select that, you can see that our shape has... Okay, I'm going to click back on the shape format and quickly click shape effect. For the shadow, I'm going to select that. You can see that our shape now has a shadow here. So I'm going to quickly copy and paste this shape. So I just want to create like a template for our chart before we bring it over here. So I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to drag this down. Then I'll copy and paste this and place it somewhere here. And also drag it. So these are things that you can adjust at any point you want to adjust anything. So you can adjust anything here. So here I'm just going to type the title for this dashboard. In order to do that, I'll click on insert tab and scroll over to text and select text box. Once I select text box, I can draw a text box here so for this text box i'm just going to type a title the title will be let's just call this sales analysis once i am done typing that title i'll click on home tab i can increase the title let's say i increase it to 18 and i bring it to the middle so I can just readjust this text box because I've increased the size of the title. So the text box is a bit high. So I can just take it up a bit. You can make it bold if you want to. And that is it. So for the shape format, I'll click on the shape format and I'm going to remove the shape fill. I don't want this shape to have any fill. Then for the shape outline, let me just remove the outline. I'll come back to home tab and select a text color. So I'm going to select white color for this because we already have a colored background over there. So that is it for our title. You can add anything within your title bar if you need to. So for our total sales, average order quantity and total number of products, I'm going to insert another text box. 
I'll click on insert and then select text box. Then I'm going to draw a text box here. So we'll draw several text box. Let me quickly copy and paste this text box to hold the title of whatever measure we are going to bring in. So I can type here total sales. I can type total sales and once I'm done typing total sales, I'm going to quickly format this. I'll change it to, I'll change the font size to 12 and I'm going to take it to the middle. So I can drag this down. So that is it for the text box there. So this text box has an outline. Let me quickly remove it. I'm going to select the text box, click on shape format and click on shape outline and select no outline. Then for this other text box here, I want to copy that measure. So just like you do when you want to write formulas or functions in Excel. So what I'll do is after clicking here, I'll come to my formula tab or formula bar and select it, type equal to. Once I select equal to, I'll click on that sheet where my pivot tables are and select this. Once I select this cell, it is sub if I press enter, it is supposed to enter, but it's saying that the formula is a missing range. So what I need to do, because I need only the cell value. So what I can do is to just edit this. So I'll select OK. So I'm just going to edit the this value because I need the cell, only the cell value. The value, the total sales value is in cell B3 in sheet 2. So that is what I need. And if I press enter, you can see that. Okay, sorry, it's actually in cell B4. So if I press enter, you can see the value here. So let's go to cell B4 and see. So you can see if I select this, you see this is cell B4. If you look at this name box, this is cell B4. So that is why I had to type B4. So we've gotten our value from there. So if the total sales changes in that pivot table, the change is going to be automatically applied to the total sales in this dashboard. Let me quickly format the size. That's too large. Okay. If I format the size there, I can take it to the middle too and maybe make it bold. Let me reduce the size a bit. I feel it's too big. Okay, so that is it. And of course, I have to select it back, click on shape format and remove the shape outline. So I'm going to select no outline. So this doesn't have any outline anymore. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm also going to paste again because we have three measures that we need to visualize. So I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm just going to readjust this. I'll also copy and paste this so that we use it for the other titles and I'll paste it again for this particular one. So if you have any other measures that you need to include, you can always include them within your dashboard. So for this title now, we want to do for the average order quantity. So I'm going to type this average order quantity. So that's our average order quantity. Then I'm going to select this. I'm going to select this other text box and change the formula here. So once I select that text box, remember I copied it, so I have to change the formula. Once I select that, I'm going to click sheet two. And for the average order quantity, I'll select this. 
remember the same thing i did for the other one i'm just going to remove the first part of this i just i want to reference only the cell so i'm going to delete this off and if i press okay let me type four if i press enter it's going to show me the average order quantity so quickly i'm going to select this and select home tab so i'll select format painter so format painter is going to copy the formatting of this and i'll be able to paste it to another text so i'm going to bring it here as i'm bringing it here you can see the format painter icon and if i select this text it has automatically applied the format to this so i'm going to select this so let me change the title face. I'll say total number of orders. Total number of orders. Then I'll click here. So I'm going to delete this because we need to change the formula. Then I'll click back on sheet two and select number of products. Once I select that, I'm quickly going to remove this first part just going to remove that first part and change it to four because the value is in four it is the header that is in that um row three so i'm going to press enter and you can see it has been applied so i'll use the same format painter i'll click on home tab select format painter i'm going to bring the format painter icon here and select so these are automatically formatted so these are our measures that we created. Like I said, if you need to add any other measure, you can actually add it. So now it's time for us to copy our charts over to this dashboard. In order to do that, I'm going to select the sheet and I'll start copying the chart. So the first chart I want to show is this sales trend. I'm going to, you can copy it or you can cut it. So I'm going to cut it by pressing Ctrl X. Or you can just um, right click and you see Ctrl X or you see cut. I'll go back to my sheet and um, I'm going to press Ctrl V. So I've pasted it here. I've pasted my chart here. I can just readjust this chart. So let me readjust this chart a bit because we are bringing in another chart. But I don't want it to be too small. So I can also reduce the screen size so that we need to we need to increase anything we can just increase it at once. So that is it for the first chart. I'm going to bring the second chart which is the product category. So I'm going to select this going to select product category and going to cut this chart take it to the other page and then paste it here so if i paste the product category here i'm just going to drag it down i'm going to drag it down and we adjust it i'm going to drag it down and we adjust it so here I can just readjust this just a little bit. I don't want the chart to be too large. So I don't want to increase the, the template. So that is it for the other chart. So like I said, it's easier. You create your chart, you bring it to your dashboard. If I go back here, I can just click to cut this and I'll come over here and then paste it. So if I paste it here, I can readjust it to fit in with this line. Then I'll come back and copy the last chart and cut the last chart. Then I'll come over here and paste this last chart. So I'm going to just reduce this a bit and scroll, bring it down because I, I need to place it here. So you can see that all our charts have outline. These are our charts and they all have outline. So I'm going to click this chart to format it. I want to remove all the, sh the shape outline for this. So I'm just going to do the same thing by removing the shape outline. 
I just don't want them to have outline, but if you want yours to have an outline, you can actually leave it. So I'm just going to select this and click format and remove the shape outline. So you can see that my charts do not have outline and this is what the visual looks like. So for February to March 2023 sales trend, you can already see that March is leading. So March has higher values that we had more sales in March than what we had in February. And for the product category, you can see that kids bike is the one that has the lowest sales. So you can decide to check what you can do to improve maybe marketing campaign for kids bike and see other areas for improvement too. And for the sales by other status, so you can see that, okay, that the council and those are still processing are still a bit high. The sales they are still high, so you need to look into that. Um, you need to look into the other status to see how you can make the shipping process faster. And also the payment method. This payment method is just going to tell you which payment method that your customers really like to use. And from here, you can see that they really like to use PayPal, even though a greater number of them still use credit card, which is still okay so this is this little dashboard that we can create here so you can adjust this let me just quickly scroll here so remember if you're creating any dashboard you can use the same method replicate it and there's a lot of things that you can do you can add or remove within your dashboard after doing this you can share or publish this dashboard to your stakeholders or to your team members so what you can do is to come over to your file tab but before then so for this sheet three let's just say sales dashboard so i'm going to rename it in order to rename it i'll double click and type sales dashboard so i'm going to type sales dashboard and press enter so i'll click on the file once i click on file tab I'll scroll down to where I have publish. So under publish, you can see there's a place where you can publish to Power BI or you just export the workbook directly to Power BI. So if you have a Power BI service account, you can always come here and click to upload this dashboard to Power BI. So you see that with Power Pivot, we've been able to create data models. We've been able to perform data analysis. And of course, we are going to share this insight for others and we are also going to share this insight to our stakeholders so you can upload here then i can quickly go back thank you so much for watching this video up to this point please if you have any questions concerning power pivots there's a lot of things that we've not even explored so some of these tools you really need to if you're really interested in them you need to take some time and learn and study some of the wonderful features that can help you perform good analysis so Thank you so much guys for watching this video if you have a question please do drop it in the comment section please also remember to like share and subscribe thank you so much